What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, I am doing a dedication ceremony. Um, we're gonna do it together. Uh, I will be leaving the link for this in the description down below. Um, but again, we're back on uh, Learn Religions in the Paganism and Wicca section. This particular one is self-dedication ritual for solitary pagans. Um, obviously, if you're part of a coven, your high priest or high priestess will perform this for you with the rest of the coven around. Um, <laughs> since my coven is that big, this is the one I'm going to be doing. Um, so, what do you got here? Okay, so it says at the top here, for many modern day pagans, being part of a coven is not an option. You may not live around any other people who share your beliefs, perhaps you haven't yet found the group that's right for you. Uh, or maybe you've just discovered you enjoy being a solitary, eclectic practitioner. That's fine too. However, one of the benefits of being part of a coven or grove is the initiation process. Um, the initiation ritual, uh, which I covered in January. Uh, again, I will leave that linked below as well. Um, this is a formal ceremony, the initiation that is. Um, oh, oh no, sorry. The dedication is a formal ceremony in which one dedicates oneself to the, to the group and the gods of the tradition. If you don't have a group or high priest to initiate you, what do you do? You self-dedicate. Um, now, within my coven, um, because I do technically have a coven, it is the Mountain Ash Coven, um, being its sole member currently means that if anyone else gets initiated, I am sort of by default, although I do not yet hold, like actually hold rank, um, but I would by default be taking place of the High Priest for the initiation ceremony, um, and thereafter would just basically sort of be on par with everyone else. Um, But yeah, so by the very definition of the word, you can't initiate yourself because to initiate requires more than one person. Um, but what you can do is dedicate yourself to your path and to the gods you've chosen to follow, uh, if you've chosen to follow any gods. Uh, for many people, doing this uh, as part of a formal ritual helps to cement their relationship with the divine. Um, some people choose to wait until they've studied for a year and a day before having formal self-dedication night it's entirely up to you. I would follow that same principle because there are levels within covens. It's a, it's a full thing. Um, essentially, you could liken it to being an elder or a priest or a bishop within Christianity. Um, there are levels. You're either part of a congregation or you can go up to being an elder, etc. As you climb the ranks. Um, Wicca and paganism has a similar thing within the covens, with like third or fourth rank being high priests and high priestesses. You can work your way up to being one. Um, within my coven, uh, to get back to the point I was making, I keep this year and a day rule. Um, so when you originally get initiated, uh, you become a neophyte where's my let me find my note i know i've got a note here <sighs> i found them here we are yeah so you would first be a seeker and you are initiated then you're an initiate um once you perform a dedication ceremony after a year and a day, you become a dedicant, and then you can work up um, being to being a magician or a witch or a wizard or a warlock, or whatever you choose to call yourself at level 
up to being a high priest or high priestess and then up to being a hierophant. A hierophant really is the highest level you can go, um, purely because hierophants are just by default um, based on what the word itself means. They um, receive um, mystic messages from the gods and they sort of um, interpret them and then obviously the high priest would then share that with the rest of the coven. Um, you may want to wait until the time of the new moon to perform this self-dedication because that is a time of new beginnings. Um, currently we are coming up on a first quarter. Um, first quarter? Yeah, we're coming up on a first quarter. Um, so if I wanted to do this properly under a new moon, um, that would have been a week ago. Um, but bear in mind that self-dedication is a commitment you are making. It should not be done at random or without significant thought beforehand. Um, now I've been reading tarot cards. Where are they? Here. Where I put them a couple of days ago after doing my King's Cup tarot. Um, but I've been reading those for a couple of years now. So I've well and truly come past that year and a day mark. Um, and I mean, this was forethought. I planned this video to be today, um, last month. So I've known that today was going to be my dedication for a while. Um, so this isn't random at all. Um, right, so the goal of the rite is to bring a dedicant closer to the divine. Um, as well as to declare yourself, uh, to, sorry, to declare your connection to your spiritual path. It's a pretty important step in your spiritual journey, so you may want to try and include, try to include things that make it formal and official in feel and in practice. Um, for instance, you may wish to do a formal preparation with, with a ritual bath before your ceremony. That's an option. Um, perhaps you'd like to include altar tools that you've crafted yourself. Um, you don't have to, but if you do, it can make the, the ritual more personal and unique. Um, you might also want to choose a magical name for yourself. Um, I do have a, like a, a naming ceremony video planned for next year. Um, so I've already got that planned as well. Um, But yet, yeah, choosing a magical name for yourself uh, means that you can introduce yourself to your gods with it. Um, the reason I've chosen to wait till then is because I'm going to put, I'm going to make that part of my ascension from being a dedicant into being an actual practitioner. Um, in my in my rise through rank. Um, But yeah, once you choose your magical name, you can sort of introduce yourself to the gods with it um, as part of this, uh, as part of your dedication. If you choose to make it part of your dedication, um, you don't have to do what I'm doing. That's the fun of this. Uh, there is no right or wrong way with this, just as there's no set gods. You may choose to just simply go with the triple goddess and the horned god, um, or you may choose to be a, you know, like a Celtic druid, um, or you may choose to take on the, the Norse gods, or the Greek gods, or the Egyptian gods, um, you might even decide that learning about the Australian Aboriginal gods is really what excites you, um, and you might want to dedicate yourself to them, and so researching them, um, one, as a whole of like, across Australia, but then two within each individual tribe or within the tribal lands that you sort of live in if you live in Australia, that could also be a really cool way to make it personal to you. Um, so yeah, um, that's, that's part of the fun of this. 
Um, and then it says here, finally, if you're good at memorization, you might want to take some time in advance to memorize as much of this ritual as possible. Uh, if you're worried, you might forget what to say. Take some time to copy this ritual by hand into your book of shadows. Mine is sitting just off to the side next to my salt lamp. Um, I haven't written in it in a while, if I'm being completely honest. I've been a bad Wiccan. I haven't been writing in my book. Um, okay, so the ritual itself. Um, keeping in mind that this is designed to be a template um, th that you can adapt and adjust for yourself um, or, 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 or the needs of the, the tradition that you um, got. Um, it says you should perform this ritual skyclad if possible. Skyclad is a link. Which is, I mean, skyclad sounds like really cool name for I remember that but it doesn't it doesn't take me anywhere okay what does what does skyclad mean when my tablet wants to it means oh, in the buck nude Got it. Nice. So it says you should perform this skyclad if at all possible. I like I like that that's like a, 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 a PC way of putting it. You could say that, oh yeah, no, he was skyclad in regular conversation and only people that know that it means naked would know that it means naked. Everyone else would be like, whoa. He was like flying? What? Um, the second thing you should do is find a place that is quiet, private, and free of distractions. Turn off your phone, uh, and if you have them, send the children and animals out if you have to. Um, begin by grounding yourself. Um, there's multiple ways of doing that. One way of, like one actual practice that's called grounding, is to be barefoot uh, in the dirt or, or the grass or just whatever you've got outside um, and allowing the energy of the earth to sort of cleanse your personal energy. Uh, if you've got all these like negative vibes flowing about your body, taking off the rubber soles that you wear every day and make in contact with the earth again can help send positive vibes into your body to flush out those negative ones um, because the earth is the earth is good to us um, another one um, this particular grounding is more more so used for stopping anxiety attacks um, but five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, one thing you can taste. Um, and sort of taking in a deep breath every time you, you know, take one in, breathe it in out, and breathe out. Breathe in, second thing, breathe out. Um, and if you do that as part of like a meditation as well, um, then, then, you know, you can find that, that might really bring you a lot of inner peace um, as well as connecting you quite strongly to your surroundings and your physical senses um, so yeah begin by grounding yourself in whatever way you see fit um, find your inner peace uh, and become nice and relaxed um, shut out all the things from your mundane life that distract you don't worry about your this, this one gives examples of like bills sports practice whether or not you've fed your animals, um, focus only on yourself and the peace and tranquility that you are, as a human being, entitled to. Um, you will then need, it says, the following items, blessing oil, salt, and a white candle. And then it actually has a bit of a script as well, written here. 
Um, so when you're ready to proceed, sprinkle the salt on the floor or ground and stand with your feet upon it. Um, so one way or the other, it has you grounding that way. Uh, light your white candle and feel the warmth of the flame. Look into the glow of the fire and think about what goals you have for yourself on your spiritual journey, specifically for your spiritual journey. Um, and the reason um, they're using fire for this is because the element of fire is more uh, connected to our passions and our ambitions um, and our spiritual journey than other ones um, connecting to the physical world because you have a physical body um, and then allowing your spiritual like your soul to connect to you fire to really sort of illuminate the way forward for you and your spiritual journey um, water represents your emotions which aren't really coming in here and air represents the mind which isn't which also isn't really coming into play here um, so yeah uh, then think about your motiv motivations for performing this self-dedication as well uh, if you have one stand before your altar and say i am a child of the gods and i ask them to bless me um, if you are not dedicating yourself to any gods you can just replace that to i'm a child of the universe and i ask it to bless me um, you would then dip your finger into the blessing oil and with your eyes closed anoint your forehead um, which would simply just be you know uh, some people do this by tracing a pentagram onto their skin um, so they would like draw the circle and then the star obviously i have no oil so i'm not anointing myself just now um if you're doing that though while you're doing that uh, you would say may my mind be blessed so i can accept the wisdom of the gods or of the universe um you would then anoint the eyelids and you would have to be careful here it does it does say that um this one would just be touching the eyes or like rubbing it across the eyelids whatever whatever suits you um and you would say may my eyes be blessed so i can see my way clearly upon this path you would then anoint the tip of your nose may my nose be blessed so i can breathe the essence um breathe in the essence of all that is divine um now for that one you might want to do that or you might go across it or whatever um anoint my lips May my lips be blessed so I may always speak with honor and respect. Your chest, may my heart be blessed so I may love and be loved. Tops of your hands. Right. Um, may my hands be blessed so I may use them to heal and help others. Um, your genital area. And that's the way it puts it as well. Um, obviously. This, this one gives the female version, and it does say to, if you're a male, make the appropriate changes here. But the um, example they give is, may, may, may my womb be blessed so I may honour the creation of life. Um, I don't know how you change that to still be... You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know exactly what your change would be, but that's, again, part of the fun of this. You get to make it for you. Um, and then you would anoint the soles of your feet and say, may my feet be blessed, that I may walk side by side with the divine. Um, you don't really need to change that here. Um, the divine could be the cosmic divine, or it could be the, you know, holy divine. Whatever holy means to you. Um, then if you have specific deities, if you are going with deities, if you have specific deities you follow, you would pledge your loyalty to them, otherwise you can use god and goddess or mother and father or simply just address the universe as a genderless being um tonight i pledge my dedication to the blank um i will walk with it them him her whatever the pronoun that is appropriate there um and again this isn't necessarily Like, for instance, if you are going to dedicate yourself to Athena, while most people will be like, Athena is a, a goddess, 
you might see her as being, you know, the, you know, a warrior god and being wise and stuff, and maybe that to you fits in more with a masculine idea of of a deity, and you might decide to refer to Athena as a he him. Um, that's not that's not wrong. It is your dedication ceremony. If that's how you identify that particular god or goddess, that's fine. There are no, there really aren't any rules here. That's, it's, it's literally asking you that question in the English test. What is your opinion? Except in this case, there isn't a wrong answer. There isn't. It's literally, what do you believe? That's the right answer. Whatever you say, that's the right answer. Um, so yes, uh, I will beside... Uh, I will walk with them, it, him, her, they, whatever. Um, but I'll, I'll walk beside... With, 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 it says, with them, beside me. Uh, and ask them to guide me on this journey. I pledge to honour them and ask that they follow me, sorry, sorry, that they allow me uh, to grow closer to them, as I will, uh, so it shall be. You would then take some time to meditate, uh, to meditate, feel the afterglow of the ritual and feel the energy of the gods around you. If you've brought yourself to the attention of the divine, um, sorry, you have, you have brought yourself to the attention of the divine, so I'll be keeping an eye on you accept the gift of their wisdom and you may choose to afterwards do some tarot cards or um, part of your ritual might be that you've done some smudging and cleansed the whole area of of um, whatever energies were there so that the divine could come in um, you might you know you might do um if, you, if it's like me and it's night time, you might look up at the stars and see what constellations are up there. Um, and, you know, where, where, where is the moon? Is it, have, you, have you performed uh, your ritual with the, with the new moon in a specific sign for a specific reason? Um, have you taken the new moon closest to your birthday? Um, is it because it's the new moon before... You, you know, like, it, it might be the the new moon for Lunar New Year, for instance, or, like, again, all the options you get to choose, um, and that's, that's really the best part of this. Um, for me, personally, um, I'm a, <laughs> I'm, I'm somewhere between the universe, um, and a sort of a genderless higher power. Um, and the, uh, to a Dedanin. Um, I have found that learning about the Celtic gods and goddesses, um, especially recently, has been really interesting. Um, and I've, found, I've even found that some of the myths, um, that they have do actually help, um, sort of make some of the tarot cards make sense. Uh, let me see if I can find my aces. I know they're all sitting together somewhere. There we go. Pull my aces out so I can explain in a bit of detail. Alright, so we know our, we know our suits. Alright. In Celtic mythology, they have what they call the four treasures. Um, four is a really powerful number just across the world. Um, always, you'll always find it in places. Um, the Greeks had the four elements. Um, there's the four points of the compass. Um, that becomes a really big thing for in, in um, Taoism and um, ancient Chinese mythology, um, with the dragon, the phoenix, the white tiger, and the black tortoise. But for Celtic mythology, we actually get the four treasures, and they are for representing cups and 
water in general is the Dagda's Cauldron, the Stone of Fal, the Sword of Light, Nuada's Sword, and then the Spear of Lu. They all fit. Um, another word for the ones that it get, sometimes gets as its suit name is staves or staves. The spear, you take if you take the spearhead off, that's what it is. It's a staff. Um, and the irony that it relates to the wands and that it doesn't lose any battle fought against it directs that into part of the mythology that maybe inspired the Elder Wand. Um, the Stone of Fowl is, uh, is able to, um, in some versions, it has written on it the original Olm script, and therefore is how the uh, druids were able to sort of learn how to write and stuff, and therefore be able to create spells. Um, and yeah, so it's 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 interesting. Um, but yeah, being able to relate that back to to that. Um, and then obviously each of those suits represents an element from Western um, uh, mythology. Um, and yeah, it just sort of snakes its way through. It's really interesting. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I know it was a bit of a longer one, um, but I hope it was um, informative and enjoyable. Um, Again, the link to that will be down below if you want to copy and paste it for yourself to make the necessary changes for yourself, um, as well as my initiation one. Um, I will leave a link to that because the link to the initiation ceremony is on that video. Um, so I'll leave the link to my video below as well. Um, and yeah, um, comment down below. Um, what gods are you following? Um, are, are you Hellenistic with the Greek gods? Are you following the Egyptian gods? The Aztec? The Mayans? The, like, which, which, which gods are you following? Let me know down below. Um, and until next time, guys, keep your head screwed up.